let's take a look at how to add and subtract fractions. Angela is painting her kitchen. If Angela paints a quarter of a wall before lunch and a quarter of the wall after lunch, what fraction of the wall did Angela paint that day? Okay, well, if she painted a quarter before lunch and then another quarter after lunch, we would add those together to figure out the total amount that she painted, right? One quarter plus one quarter. When you're adding with fractions, you have to remember that you need a common denominator, meaning the same number in the bottom of the fraction before you can add. Now in this case, they're both already four, so I already have a common denominator. When you add those fractions, the denominator does not change because it's telling us what it's out of. So maybe her wall is split into four sections and she painted one section before lunch and one after. So we're still saying out of those four sections, how many did she paint? So notice what it's out of does not change. And then I'm going to add the numbers in the numerator or top. She painted one section plus she painted another section. So altogether she painted two out of the four sections. Okay, and then from here I can simplify or reduce 2 over 4 because 2 goes into both numbers. Remember we can think of 2 as being 2 times 1 and we can think of 4 as 2 times 2. And when you write it that way, now we can see that we can cancel a factor of 2 on the top with a factor of 2 on the bottom and that's going to leave me with 1 half. So she painted half the wall that day. An ice cream shop sells vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry milkshakes. Five-eighths of the milkshakes sold are vanilla, and one-eighth of the milkshakes sold are chocolate. What fraction of the milkshakes sold are chocolate or vanilla? Okay, well if we have five-eighths that are vanilla and another one-eighth that are chocolate, if we want to know how many are vanilla or chocolate, we would need to add these together. Okay, so let, let's think of that eight, right? It's always out of the total. So maybe this means out of every eight milkshakes they sell, five are vanilla and one are chocolate, right? So the common denominator is going to stay the same, right? Common means it's in both right, the same in both, and denominator means the bottom number. So both of these have a common denominator because they both have eight on the bottom. So that's good, that means we're ready to add them. If they didn't, we would have to take an extra step first to rewrite them over a common denominator. But in this case, I'm gonna say the bottom stays eight, so we're still talking about out of eight total milkshakes. And then you add or subtract the numbers on the top, or the numerator. So 5 plus 1 gives us 6. So 6 out of 8 milkshakes were chocolate or vanilla. Now I can reduce this because 2 goes into both of these numbers. So I can write 6 as 2 times 3, and I can write 8 as 2 times 4. So if I cancel a factor of 2 on the top and the bottom, 3 quarters or 3 fourths of the milkshakes are chocolate or vanilla. A bakery makes three types of bagels, plain, poppy seed, and sesame seed. Three-fifths of the bagels are plain, and six-sevenths of the bagels are poppy seed. What fraction of the bagels are plain or poppy seed? Well, if I want to know what fraction are either one, I would need to add those two numbers together, right? We had three-fifths of the bagels are plain, plus six-sevenths of the bagels are poppy seed. Okay, now notice I do not have a common denominator here, right? The bottom of one fraction or the denominator is five, and the denominator of the other is seven. So I can't add them until I put them over a common denominator. So I want to figure out what's the smallest that number that 5 and 7 both go into. So one way to find your common denominator is to multiply these numbers together. 
right? Five times seven is 35, so I know they can both be written over 35. Now, if you think there's a smaller number than that you can use, you can also write out the least common multiple. But if I count by fives, right? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, those are the multiples of five, seven is not gonna go into any smaller numbers than 35. So I'm gonna just use 35 as my common denominator. Now, when, when I change these fractions, right, the one that was 3 fifths, when I change it to being over 35, the rule is you need to be consistent. Whatever you did to the bottom or the denominator, you have to do the same thing in the numerator or the top. So to get from 5 to 35, I multiplied times 7, right? 7 times 5 gives me 35. So if I multiplied by 7 on the bottom, I have to be consistent and also multiply by 7 in the top or the numerator. So 7 times 3 makes it 21. So notice I'm not changing the value. 21 over 35 is another way to write 3 over 5 that has the same value. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So if I went from 7 to 35, that means I multiplied the denominator by 5. So I have to do the same thing and multiply the numerator by 5. So in the top or the numerator, 6 times 5 gives me 30. And now I'm ready to add because I have a common denominator. Okay, so my common denominator is 35, and I'm going to add the numbers across the top. Okay, well 21 plus 30 gives me 51. Okay, so a couple of things to notice here. Now, first of all, notice I have an improper fraction, meaning the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom. So we can simplify that to write it as a mixed number. Okay, that also means it's bigger than one. So maybe they were talking about bagels that were sold for more than one day, right? Of the bagels on one day and of the bagels on another, because we have more than all the bagels, essentially. Okay, so let's see. How many times does 35 go into 51? Well, 35 is going to go into 51 one time, so that means I have one as my whole number. And then to see how many left over, I'm going to subtract. 51 minus 35 means I still have another 16 left over out of 35. So as a mixed number, oh, sorry, I'm a little too close to the bottom. Let me write this over here so you can see it. As a mixed number, we would say 1 and 16 over 35, right? That has the same value as 51 over 35. Cameron inflates his bicycle tires until they are three quarters full of air. After riding his bike for an hour, Cameron discovers a hole in his tire and that the tire is only four-eighths full of air. What fraction of the total volume of the tire was lost through the leak? All right, well, if he started out... with three-quarters or three-fourths full of air, and at the end it was only four-eighths full of air, we should be able to subtract to figure out how much air was lost, right? His starting amount minus what was left should tell us what was lost. Now, just like adding, when you're subtracting, you also need a common denominator. So what is the smallest number that four and eight both go into? Now, in this case, I'm not gonna just multiply four times eight because even though that is a possible common denominator, I think it would be much bigger than necessary. Let's think about our least common multiple here to see if we can come up with the smallest number. Multiples are what you have when you count by those numbers. Common means it's the same to both, and least means it's the smallest. So if I count by fours, the multiples of four are things like four, eight, 12, and so on. If I count by eights, the multiples of eight are things like eight, 16, 24, and so on. So if you look at these two lists, you can see the smallest number in both lists is 8. 
So my least common multiple is eight, and that's what I can use as my common denominator. So I wanna write both of these as a fraction out of eight. Now, if you looked at them and you said, hey, I know four goes into eight, you might've come up with that right off the top of your head. But just showing you a couple different ideas here for how you can figure out the common denominator. Now, the second fraction, I didn't change the eight at all. So that one's just gonna stay the way it is, right? Four over eight. For the first fraction, I did have to change it. The four became an eight. So I multiplied that by two, right? Two times four gives us eight. So if I multiplied the bottom or the denominator by two, I have to do the exact same thing on the top or numerator and say two times three is six, okay? And hopefully you would agree with me that six out of eight has the same value as three out of four. And now we're ready to subtract. So remember, just like with adding, whether you're adding or subtracting, the denominator doesn't change. It's still out of eight. And then I'm simply gonna subtract straight across the top, right? Six minus four gives me two. So he lost two eighths of the air in his tire. Now I can simplify two eighths because they're both even numbers, which mean that two goes into both. So I can think of two as two times one, and I can think of eight as two times four. And when I write it this way, now I can see I can cancel out a factor of two, and that's gonna leave me with one fourth. In Natalie's backyard, there is a sundial that she uses to tell the time. Natalie sits down to read a book. After reading, she notes that the shadow on the sundial has moved two-thirds of a rotation around the dial. After doing some yard work, she notices the shadow has moved another one and a half of a rotation. What fraction of a rotation has the this, has this sundial shadow moved in total? Okay, well it moved two-thirds of a rotation and then it moved another one and a half rotation. So all together, we wanna add, add it together to see how much the sundial moved. Okay, so we're gonna say 2 thirds plus one and a half. Okay, well first, before I do anything else, I wanna change my mixed number to a fraction. Okay, so one way to do this, you can think of the whole thing, right? One is the whole thing. So another way to write one would be two out of two. So I have two out of two plus another one half, which means that all together that's equal to three out of two, right? So one and one half as an improper fraction would be three out of two. Now the really quick way to do that is to say one times two is two plus the one is three. So I all together have a total of three out of that two. Okay, so I'm gonna add two thirds plus three halves, right? Which is just another way to write one and a half. Now I wanna write these over a common denominator before I add them together. So what's the smallest number that three and two both go into? Well, if I multiply them together, three times two gives me six, and I don't think they're gonna go into anything smaller than that. So let's use six as our common denominator. Okay, well to get from three to six, I multiplied by two. So I have to do the same thing on the top. On the top, two times two gives me four. Okay, so four out of six has the same value as two out of three. For the second fraction, my two became a six. So that means I had to have multiplied by three on the bottom, right? Two times three is six. So I'm gonna do the same thing and multiply by three on the top. Three times three is nine. And now I'm ready to add because I have a common denominator. Remember the denominator stays the same and you simply add across the numerator or the top. Well, four plus nine gives me 13. So it made 13 out of six rotations. Okay, well, let's write this as a mixed number. How many times does six go into 13? Well, six goes into 13 two times, right? Six times two is 12. So that would be one left over 
out of six. So two and one-sixth rotations were made of the sundial.